Okay, in today's session we're going to look at web services and web service script API scripts. So we'll start by taking a look at the um, web service administration portal and we're going to run through an entire installation of web services. There's already um, sufficient documentation on our web available from our website that details the um, the setup and um, and configuration of the web services. Um, today we're just going to um, just going to familiarize ourselves with the web service administration facility. And then we'll move on and have a look at some um, how we test web services inside of FinPower Connect and how we can run and um, write um, web service scripts. Okay, if we go to the Intersoft website and we look at the resources uh, download section and go to developer, if we scroll down, you'll see here that there are um, uh, FinPower Connect custom um, web services programming guide okay so that will cover off in much more detail than we have a chance to go into today um, how to create and write your own custom web services we also have the web services connectivity and programming guide and that is aimed for third party developers who wish to connect via um, their websites or web applications um, to use FinPower Connect web services and then we have the installation and configuration guide and as I mentioned before that's a um, a complete guide on, um, on how to install and configure the FinPower Connect web services on a web server. As I say, we're not going to delve too deeply into that today, but we will have a look at the um, web services administration facility. So once you've installed the web services onto the web server, you can access the um, the, the admin facility um, using the web admin URL. So yeah, this is obviously pointing to um, the installation of web services on our web server. In this case, this is just locally on my laptop. Um, but in, in obviously in production, this will be on um, uh, on the server. And we're just going to hit the sign in button here. There's a web admin by default. The password will be password. Obviously, we recommend that that would be changed. And then we're, we're presented with this screen here. Okay, so we have um, four widgets on the home page here, which allow us to um, uh, allow us to view the status, um, update business layer pools, view any logs, uh, and also um, configure the web services themselves. So if we click down on here, for instance, under database settings, this is a database for um, with which you're going to the FinPower Connect database with which you're going to use the web services. So this would be the production, you know, the production clients production database and server details in here and the FinPower credentials as well so an administrator user so it's entirely up to you whether you use an existing admin user or whether you create a new admin user specifically for use with web services I would recommend that that, that you do that um, but that's entirely up to you once you've entered those details the status bar over here should update to green and you should get an OK message um, come up in the, in the status here that means that web services is now running on the on the web server is connected to a FinPower Connect database and is ready to use. As well as the um, as well as the database settings, there's also some configuration settings as well in here. Um, when I'll show you um, shortly how we can go in and define those configuration settings, and then we have some other settings in here as well. Where we're actually going to go in and and select a web configuration. Now these are actually configurable inside of FinPower Connect. You can't create a new one from here. If we save that, and you'll see that the feature availability tab over here is updated to reflect the fact that we now have email, SMS, and external services available to us, and we don't yet have Document Manager. And the support tab just shows us some general system information. So feature availability, depending on what you have defined in your configuration web config file, and as I say, we'll look at the web config um, in, in a moment, um, that will depend, that will dictate what is available on the um, on this feature availability tab. Okay, so the web services is set up and ready to use. Other things to note in here are that the um, that any application or website that wishes to use the web services or wishes to connect to the web services must have a web subscriber ID. So if we click on our hamburger menu over here, and you can see there's a web subscribers section where we can go in and we can actually define a, uh, a subscriber key 
for the application that's going to be connecting. So um, once again, we won't jump into this in too much detail, but your, um, your third party um, the developer will need to authenticate with the web services in order to use them and order to, in order to authenticate they need to have been given a web subscriber code and web subscriber secret key so if I look drill down on here you give it a code it generates you a secret key you can regenerate the secret key inside of FinPower Connect if you need to and that will then um, that information then gets passed to your third-party developer who will use that to authenticate with the web services and all of that inform all of that um, process is detailed in um, in the documents that um, that I pointed to you to on our website a little earlier. Okay, so that's web subscribers. As I say, every single application that's going to be used in the web services needs to have a subscriber record. So if you're going to be using, um, if you're going to have multiple sites or multiple web apps that need, or multiple applications that need access to the web services, then you'll need to create a subscriber record for each of those. You shouldn't be sharing those around. That should be application, um, application specific. Okay, so our web services okay, so are, uh, are ready to go. So we, um, we jump into some Power Connect, set up our, our web services. We have a green bar, um, and we can we go to our, our okay. tools, which means we can go into. You can see here that there are um, our web subscribers. We can also start testing our web subscriber records in um, open up inside of Connect. Power Connect as well. And we go to tools, web. And as and well as setting up um, subscriber records, we can also set up web. And see here, first thing it wants is the URL, which is obviously the URL of the web services that we're going to connect to. And, and the said, extension for, for that URL is always slash API. Enable, obviously, um, things previously like we were looking at if we enable, admin, um, we were looking at a web administrator, document manager, web administration um, facility. But anyway, I'm wishing to actually um, authenticate and use um, the web services the addressing using information um, slash API. Um, uh, and we can ping really to check that those web services return. And then that will um, that will mean that the web services returned information, which is of those just to double check that everything's working. Those areas, and then we can go ahead and see those reflected. Now there are various selection authentication on the user types on our. We can choose. Um, we can choose to authenticate as a client. So if we were, for instance, going to as use well as web like client configurations client, and web subscribers, we, we also have a test on which web clients themselves would be logging in. Um, so to test the web services, we can set client, which we'll, um, we'll need to specify navigate to our web services client to API. Um, to okay, use. So this um, is specifically, the, um, the, we'll be um, authenticating as a user, installation. Um, but we Whereas can also run our web browser. We had um, a web, web admin in here. Really, is just for testing. Web admin takes us to the web um, facility, um, but the API is where all of the um, is, um, is basically our library of should really be using a library of code. So anybody um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, a user to the web services, whether you decide to use an API user or whether you ping the web services, create an entirely new that the web services version and the reasonable version. Um, um, it's entirely up to you, uh, but it, the, the user um, should be um, should it's be confirmed an, that, um, that we can access the web, the, the web services. So now we select so now we need the to authenticate. Web subscriber. So if we look at the um, uh, user um, authentication uh, options for each we can application that's going um, to be using web services. Needs authenticate a, as a client, a subscriber key, and um, so if we were to develop a code and secret key portal, in order to authenticate, going into and this essentially is just replicating that um, this, this you made the and this is just replicating what be made as a website client, as a FinPower Connect client. More typically. It would be as a user. Okay, so we select um, our in Power Connect user token, um, um, which is slightly different, to and then uh, or as a as a web administrator Ooh. sign in. So a web administrator is fine to be used. However, user. you should really only use that in testing your authentication. We've got a couple of extra tabs down through. the bottom here. We're going to look um, at the web services user. tab now. Our so subscriber the web tab. Once we've already once we've connected, um, you could see um, earlier um, our web services web tab subscribers. All of the available built-in web subscribers in the database. This is everything that's available out of our secret key. Um, in terms of and then our uh, web system web services, uh, uh, FinPower Connect user. Now these are and deliberately um, reasonably generic. Um, everybody tends in. to want to either submit or request different fields and things from uh, from FinPower Connect. So we've kept these uh, we at a reasonably that's generic file level. So, so if we hit down, the so the, of we draw the, down onto the web, web services, services tab you'll, here. Um, you'll, um, you'll, you would need for a, for a project, a web project would, um, would need to be a custom built in um, web, service web services scripts, rather than um, so these are all of the web services that are, that are available so out of the box. We've got here. However, so there are plenty of them available. Um, um, the first so if one we take, for instance, a look at our accounts, you can see um, here, accounts we, we all can chose them authenticate as get account user. basics, so as well as the display an account ID, page for that, yeah, um, and hit or test. I say the, 
um, and you can see here that'll actually web run that web service and for that particular web us. service. We can also the, view uh, the, the content, um, the request, and the response. And you can see here that we've um, got the help page. So each of these the built-in web that, services um, has our um, uh, um, was web services help was pulled through. Um, and the reason that it's through um, is everything a web developer earlier. might ever need to know for, um, for actually using that particular web service. Including all the well, response codes, our web and, um, subscriber codes, lists, etc. Our web um, subscriber list here, and we've got our request and response to the um, tab. So you can see exactly the, we um, have the the web request yeah. that was sent in order to so this is an um, important to, um, to access an that important web service. Thing to note. And the data just that was because we're in this under the um, we're in this FinPower Connect here, database, we punched in an um, account the database ID of that we're um, actually. Double out below from Power Connect um, web services we are using account is different. basic web services. So you can you can jump into a demo database and test um, the web the services folder for um, one and of your clients in one parameter which and it will relate to ID. that client. However, obviously the drop downs will relate to the current. You can see here that this is um, all so been returned come back into XML, our web services. Go back to the here. Connect tab here and I would format um, update the format drop down database here where we can reflect either XML or JSON. By default, the web services depending on um, the database that on we're the content type using. made in the request, it will return either XML or JSON. So it's entirely up to you at a per web service level. Um, it can, it will by default return either XML or JSON depending on what the person who has see here, made the request has set updated their content the status type bar. to be. So if your web developer wants JSON, they simply need and to we come back into send here. a content type of JSON. And, I and if we re were to rerun the same form. web service, you can see that's now change that response to be um, to be to a JSON Go response in. instead. So a really handy um, a really handy little tool this um, this test web services um, firstly obviously for checking that the um, you've set everything up correctly and you can connect to the web services but also for um, but also for actually going in and, and testing not only built-in web services but any custom web services you are to write um, you can also go and test them in here as well. So you don't have to go away. And I mean, obviously, you know, you can use third party tools for um, for this sort of thing. Uh, but this is a nice interface and it's built into FinPower Connect. So it makes sense to to make use of it. Okay, so we've looked at the um, we obviously looked at the, the web services administration. We've now looked at the test web services form. So we're going to have a quick look at the um, at the web service scripts themselves. So if I were to open up a scripts window, and here's one I made earlier, we'll go to the export first. So you can see here that we have a script type of web service uh, web API. And if we go to our script code, in fact, let's open up a blank script. I show you the template code. So as you can see here, this is a um, we have a main function as we do with um, with most, if not all, other scripts. Um, however, this time rather than return a boolean, it's actually returning a um, an HTTP response. Okay, so obviously a web service, the idea is that a request is made and a response is sent back. So that's why we have um, that's why by default it returns a response. And we have a couple of extra variables here for error codes and error status codes and things as well. So by default, it will give a uh, an error status code of bad request. And we will change that um, if everything has been successful. So the very first piece of code that the um, the template code gives us is some user validation here. So this is um, this is our way of um, of defining which um, which of those authentication types or those user types are valid for this particular web service. So we can go ahead and remove client and, and web admin because we're only going to allow FinPower Connect users to access this. Uh, similarly, if it were a client portal, then you might get rid of the, the bottom two and just allow clients to um, to access. So again, you know that's a um, a pretty powerful um, a, a pretty powerful per at, at a per um, web service level um, a pretty powerful way of being able to um, um, to be able to specify which type of users um, can authenticate. So we go ahead and get rid of 
get rid of those two. Anything else comes back and sets an error code to authenticated user unauthorized and sets the status code to be unauthorized as well, as well as displaying a message back to the user that this custom web service is not available to that particular user type. And then at the bottom, um, after that, if everything's successful, then it's going to go ahead and return a response. If everything worked, then we'll just create a response with a status code of OK. And that will let the um, the the web the, the the whoever's called the web service know that everything has worked, and then a an, an object to return back to that. So that object might be a whole stack of XML. It may be um, a simple text response. Um, it could be um, yeah could be could be any type of object that's going to be returned to the um, going to be returned to the um, to the to the web service. So this will be serialized as XML or JSON. This will be serialized by XML or JSON, and you don't need to do anything in order to serialize it to XML or JSON. So by default, by using create response, if you pass in an object in here, whatever the web, the, the web developer or whoever, um, whatever is calling the web service um, has defined in their content type, as in XML or JSON, the script will automatically uh, return either XML or JSON. Okay, so you don't need to actually go ahead and serialize um, serialize your object. It will automatically do that for you if you use create response. Okay, so it's there in the template code anyway, so it's a nice easy one to leave in place. And obviously, if um, if the script were to fail, then it creates an error response and passes back the um, the error message and a little um, a little message here about the script being um, being broken. Okay, so if we have a look at a web service that we um, we made earlier, we can see here that I've um, already taken out the uh, the client's user type, um, so this is only um, only accessible by users and uh, web administrators. Um, and then we've actually gone and uh, we've gone and created some um, some custom classes. So um, we're not going to run through the code in um, in, a, in, a, in too much detail. But we're, um, the a basic overview is that we're going to um, we're going to loop through a um, we're going to collect a a list of client IDs. So we're going to ask that the web service, when it is called, it is passed a list of um, a list of client IDs. It will then loop through those client IDs. It will load the FinPower Connect client. It will create our own little custom client object, which has a few client fields in it, which we'll see um, very shortly. Uh, in fact, it just it has the, the the client ID and an error message if it's failed, uh, and it adds that client that custom client to the um, to a collection. Okay, so really really simple. We accept a bunch of um, a bunch of client IDs um, that we're asked that we ask is part are passed into the web service. Assuming they get passed in, it's going to loop through each of those client IDs, load up the corresponding FinPower Connect client. It's going to create a custom client class, an instance of a custom client class, um, with some properties defined on it, and it's going to add that to a collection, which is simply just the list of our class. Okay. So once we have that list of our class, okay, where our um, create response is just going to simply uh, pass that over. So whereas the template script by default has a little text message in here, which says, um, you know, it's a simple text response, we're actually going to pass back a collection of client of custom client objects, okay? And as I said before, um, we, if we call it via, if we call the web service via um, XML, then it'll return that as XML. Otherwise, it'll return it as JSON, and we don't need to do anything, anything more, um, more complicated than that. And we've left the uh, the error response to be exactly the same. So if I go ahead into our test web services form, and I go to our custom, and this one's going to be a custom get because we're going to be getting information back from the database and we select our script ID which was WS client export and you can see here that we've said that this should have a parameter of client IDs so if I go back into here and client IDs equals C100 2 and I hit test and there you go you see it's found our FinPower Connect client 
and it's passed back some, some fields that I've defined in my custom class. So first name, last name, date of birth, and a list of all of um, William Brown's accounts, open accounts. And there you go. And because it's a comma separated list we've asked for, we can go ahead and do that too. And then it's going to pass back the clients. Multiple clients. There we go. Peter Morris as well, and all of his accounts as well. Okay, so we've just defined a, a little custom object, that, a little custom class that has a first name, last name, a date of birth, and, uh, and a collection of accounts. And um, we'll I'll show you the script that um, where we've defined that. The best class you can see here, we have a custom account object which has some properties on it. And we also have a custom client object with some properties on it as well. Okay, has a list of accounts. And I will make all of this um, all of this um, all of this code available to um, to everybody um, when I write up the blog for this video. And um, so you can, you'll actually be able to go in and, and download those scripts and have a play around with them as well. So you'll be able to see how those um, how those hold together. But really, really simple, not much code there at all. And um, we've we've created our own custom custom web services that um, that accepts the client IDs, a list of client IDs, and returns back some information. And the difference between an execute get and an execute post, obviously a get is when we're returning information from FinPower, so they've requested something, so in this case client information. Um, post is the opposite, so post is where um, they're actually trying to um, update FinPower Connect from um, information collected via a, a website or a web application. And for that we've done a, uh, I've done another sample, uh, client import. Okay, so it uses exact, exactly the same class structure as before. And instead of going through and um, instead of going through and um, building objects and sending them back, in this instance we need to um, we need to accept an object that's been sent through. So the very first thing we're going to do is deserialize that string of, of XML that was passed into the web service, and um, and then we're going to um, we're going to we're going to create um, custom we're going to create clients in FinPower Connect and update the information in there to save the client. Okay, so I'll um, I'll show you when um, we'll run we'll run it through first. If you look at the general page for this script, you can see here's a um, here's a little sample XML. So this is the XML that your website or your web application would be submitting to this web service. It's got an outer node of clients and then a node of client, some client ID, either an optional client ID and then a first name, last name, and date of birth. Okay, so if we go to our test web service and I select our web service script, client import. So the request text, this is the text that, um, as I say, this is the XML or JSON that's going to be sent through to the web service from your website, your web developer. So they'll be collecting this information at their end and then they'll be passing it through in this exact format to the web service. And if we hit test, you can see here, we have a status of success and a message to say we successfully saved this client here. So if we call open the client form, and you can see here, oh, Bob Testers has been uh, has been created as a as a client in FinPower Connect. Okay, and the script code to do that, like I say, I'll make all of this available to you. But we use exactly the same custom classes as we used in the um, in the previous example. This time though we need to deserialize the XML string that was sent through to us. So in this instance we're um, we're assuming that we're um, that we are uh, we're we're actually going to be consuming XML as opposed to JSON. Okay so this would be um, this would be information you, you can obviously um, we could dynamically decide whether it was XML or JSON just by checking on the request object. Um, in this instance, we're just saying, right, we're going to de we're assuming XML, and we're going to deserialize our XML string to an object, and where the object we're going to deserialize it to is our custom clients class that we have um, defined over here in our function library, and then we're going to loop through each of the custom client in custom clients. So, in this instance, we've only got one, but you can see here we could have added a second and a third, fourth client. Um, to be that should be 
you know to be created by this web service so it would loop through any of the clients in there and it would create a it would try and load um, a finpower connect client if a client id had been passed through otherwise that would load blank and then update the um, first name last name date of birth and then simply save the um, save the client and it's as simple as that then all we've done is we've got a little response detail class that we've gone ahead and um, um, and returned so in this instance it said uh, successfully saved client we can see that message has been passed back here we might have just sent back a single um, a single string value with um, with the client ID in it but it's often nice to create a little response class that you can send back for each of your web services so you can see the status of the um, the web service call they've made to update that information has been successful and a little message um, to go along with it that just adds those response details and then returns those in our response. So like I say, our create response may be as simple as just client ID in here instead. Okay. One, th one last thing we'll do is um, we'll just go back to our, um, our client export um, example and our get post. And we'll go back to our connection page and change our format to JSON so you remember this code here simply <coughs> simply returns our list of custom uh, custom clients we haven't done anything to serialize those to JSON or to uh, or to XML but by selecting JSON as our um, as our format for this web service call when we go ahead and click our test button you can see here it's returned that information as JSON as opposed to um, as opposed to XML so really really powerful and we don't need to write any code to um, to actually serialize those to different um, different content types okay as I said before I will make all of these scripts uh, everything you've seen today will be available to you on our um, on our blog I'll write up a blog following the following the video and um, have downloadable links for each of those um, each of those three script files um, you can also access our um, all of the information on for setting up web services um, from our dealer uh, developer downloads page uh, as well as um, a full guide on custom web services pr uh, programming so I know that we've we've gone through that um, at a very high level and very very briefly today um, looking at those custom web service scripts but this guide here will tell you everything you need to know uh, and more about creating um, custom web services hopefully you found that uh, found the video useful and um, we'll catch up next time